you could have taken any coaching job. Mm -hmm. You could have coached pro, you could have coached college, but you decided to coach HBCU, okay? And, and I, I'm, a, I'm a Chicago guy, and I grew up watching Walter Payton. Yeah. And he went to Jackson State. And, Amen. And uh, why? Why HBCU? What, what? That, that, was all, that was all God. Let me, let me tell you how. I interviewed for three jobs, and I know I killed it. Not only did I kill it, I did the Dougie when I walked out that thing. <laughs> I was so prepared and so on point and so progressive. I took them, I gave them a three to five year plan. This is how it was gonna look under prime. This is gonna be a whole new beginning for your universities. This is what we're gonna do. This is the kind of guys we're gonna attract. This is the kind of kids. We're gonna get kids that are smart, tough, fast, disciplined with character. We're gonna do this. The marketability is gonna do that. We're gonna take your profile up. Or we're gonna have a new stadium here or the one that needed it. We're gonna do, I mean, I had it all down. And God said, no. I'm going to close those doors because I need you to go right there. I said, come on, man. Lord, come on, man. <laughs> now, that, that right there has more problems than a math book. <laughs> HBCUs, am I lying? Okay. But he said, yeah, but I know they have more problems than a math book, but you got solutions. Not only do you have solutions, you got nerve. Not only do you have nerve, but you have believability and knowledge and wisdom and understanding. So I've kept you in the dark coaching youth and coaching high school for 15 years. Now it's time for me to bring you in the light because I know what you're going to bring to the table. And when I brought it, I brought it. And when I did it, I did it. And I hadn't stopped. So it's not a day to go by. I'm not thinking of ways to enhance not just Jackson State, all HBCUs. I'm calling everything out. I, I, I mean, the dorms, the food, the look. My thing was when I got to Jackson, I said, how in the world could a darn public high school look better than a public college? That don't make sense to me. How in the world can, can this college eat this and we have to eat that? That don't make sense to me. I started calling presidents. Not presidents on campus, but presidents of these companies. Look, I got a problem with our foods. Um, we need to handle this. And I get everybody from the college, and I get everybody from the company, and we find out where the lie is. And the lie has to get up and go, because they're, not, they're forgetting, not only am I fighting for your kid, and your kid, and your kid, and your kid, and that kid of all ethnicities, but my kids are there on campus. So you think for one minute I'm gonna let your kid, your kid, your kid, your kid of all ethnicities starve and not sleep comfortably and my kids are on campus as well? You, the devil is a lie. We deserve the absolute best. We gonna get the absolute best. We gonna have the absolute best. It's no way that a college two hours down the road should be living better than we're living. It's no way in the world. And not only that, you gotta challenge the people that graduated. See, everybody clapped that attended, but everybody, those claps would cease when I talk about the giving back. Because that's where the difference is, the giving back. We have the propensity not to give back to what's blessed us. Baby, if you bless me like you blessed me today, you call me, we in Dallas, we going to dinner. Me, you, wife, and my lady, we going to dinner because you blessed me. Sure. I got to pay it forward. We got to learn how to do that, people. Yeah. We got to start blessing what blessed us. All the time, we just walk away and don't even look back over our shoulder and holler, I got mine. I know you got yours, but somebody else need to get theirs. <laughs> I, I noticed watching ESPN that there was a special combine. Ellis Swauz and I were just talking about that. Chris, I were just talking about that. We, just, we saw coverage of an HBCU combine. I don't, like, I don't like it. No, it hadn't happened before, but I don't like it. it. The reason I don't like it, before I got into the HBCU, coaching. I wanted it. I was the one thought it, of it and I wanted to have it because it didn't exist. Yeah. But once I got into the HBCUs, I started saying, why would I settle for separatism? So you mean to tell me you could bring partial amount of scouts to a combine that 
spotlights 54 kids, okay? Won't you bring them to the regular combine? There's only five to six more per position. You have time to sit there for five more guys running routes and doing what they're doing. That's an easy fix. Instead of have separatism, when you're not sending all the, uh, the resources that you would send to the major combine. So I'm tired of separatism. Just like in the NFL, we're talking about ain't no black coaches, ain't no black coaches. Okay, what about the black owners? Okay, instead of crying for this, let's fight for that. So what if we fought for four more African American owners? Quit fighting for the coaching aspect. That's the lower level. Let's fight for the ownership. Yes, I'm talking so you have four more franchises. The NFL is a machine, as yeah. you know. Yeah. We have several multiple cities that could that could warrant another franchise. So let's just have four more franchises and mandate that you give those four franchises to African-American ownership and let it be whatever it is. Because you can't make no billionaire do what he don't want to do. They can't make you hire who you don't want to hire. You're going to hire who you're comfortable with, who you're cool with, who can do the job for you, who you have relationship with, who you understand that they have the capability to make it happen for you, regardless of the ethnicity. You can't make me hire no cook in my house. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're saying. You, that's not going to work. But if it's my house, I can hire who I want to hire. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's the solvency to that problem. If you like that clip, watch this next short clip right here. And to watch the full episode, click right here. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.